Meditation One of Six Metaphysical Meditations. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Larry Wilson. Six Metaphysical Meditations by Rene Descartes, translated by William Molyneux. Of Things Doubtful some years past i perceived how many falsities i admitted as truths in my younger years and how dubious those things were which i raised from thence and therefore i thought it requisite if i had a design to establish anything that should prove firm and permanent in sciences that once in my life i should clearly cast aside all my former opinions and begin anew from some first principles but this seemed a great task and i still expected the maturity of years then which none could be more apt to receive learning upon which account i waited so long that at last i should deservedly be blamed had i spent that time in deliberation which remained only for action this day therefore i conveniently released my mind from all cares i procured myself a time quiet and free from all business i retired myself alone and now at length will i freely and seriously apply myself to the general overthrow of all my former opinions to the accomplishment of which it will be necessary for me to prove them all false for that perhaps i shall never achieve but because my reason persuades me that i must withdraw my assent no less from those opinions which seem not so very certain and undoubted then i should from those that are apparently false it will be sufficient if i reject all those wherein i find any occasion of doubt neither to effect this is it necessary that they all should be run over particularly which would be an endless trouble but because the foundation being once undermined whatever is built thereon will of its own accord come to the ground i shall therefore immediately assault the very principle on which whatever i have believed was grounded viz whatever i have hitherto admitted is most true that i received either from or by my senses but these i have often found to deceive me and tis prudence never certainly to trust those that i have though but once deceived us one doubt but though sometimes the senses deceive us being exercised about remote or small objects yet there are many other things of which we cannot doubt though we know them only by the senses as that at present i am in this place that i am sitting by a fire that i have a winter gown on me that i feel this paper with my hands but how can it be denied that these hands or this body is mine unless i should compare myself to those madmen whose brains are disturbed by such a disorderly melancholic vapour that makes them continually profess themselves to be kings though they are very poor or fancy themselves clothed in purple robes though they are naked or that their heads are made of clay as a bottle or of glass etc but these are madmen and i should be as mad as they in following their example by fancying these things as they do one solution this truly would seem very clear to those that never sleep and suffer the same things and sometimes more likely in their repose than these madmen do whilst they are awake for how often am i persuaded in a dream of these usual occurrences that i am in this place that i have a gown on me that i am sitting by a fire etc though all the while i am lying naked between the sheets but now i am certain that i am awake and look upon this paper neither is this head which i shake asleep i knowingly and willingly stretch out this hand and am sensible that things so distinct could not happen to one that sleeps as if i could not remember myself to have been deceived formerly in my sleep by the like thoughts which while i consider more attentively i am so far convinced of the difficulty of distinguishing sleep from waking that i am amazed and this very amazement almost persuades me that i am asleep two doubt wherefore let us suppose ourselves asleep and that these things are not true viz that we open our eyes move our heads stretch our hands and perhaps that we have no such things as hands or a body yet we must confess that what we see in a dream is as it were a painted picture which cannot be devised but after the likeness of some real thing and that therefore these generals at least viz eyes head hands and the whole body are things really existent and not imaginary 
for painters themselves even then when they design mermaids and satyrs in the most unusual shapes do not give them natures altogether new but only add the diverse parts of different animals together and if by chance they invent anything so new that nothing was ever seen like it for that tis wholly fictitious and false yet the colours at least of which they make it must be true colours so upon the same account though these general things as eyes heads hands etc may be imaginary yet nevertheless we must of necessity confess the more simple and universal things to be true of which as of true colours these images of things whether true or false which are in our minds are made such as are the nature of a body in general and its extension also the shape of things extended with the quantity or bigness of them their number also and place wherein they are the time in which they continue and the like and therefore from hence we make no bad conclusion that physic both natural and medicinal astronomy and all other sciences which depend on the consideration of compound things are doubtful but that arithmetic geometry and the like which treat only of the most simple and general things not regarding whether they really are or not have in them something certain and undoubted for whether i sleep or wake two and three make five a square has no more sides than four etc neither seems it possible that such plain truths can be doubted of two solution but all this while there is rooted in my mind a certain old opinion of the being of an omnipotent god by whom i am created in the state i am in and how know i but he caused that there should be no earth no heaven no body no figure no magnitude no place and yet that all these things should seem to me to be as now they are and as i very often judge others to err about those things which they think they thoroughly understand so why may i not be deceived whenever i add two and three or count the sides of a square or whatever other easy matter can be thought of three doubt but perhaps god wills not that i should be deceived for he is said to be infinitely good three solution yet if it were repugnant to his goodness to create me so that i should always be deceived it seems also unagreeable to his goodness to permit me to be deceived at any time which last no one will affirm some there are truly who had rather deny god's omnipotence than believe all things uncertain but there are at present we may not contradict and we will suppose all this of god to be false yet whether they will suppose me to become what i am by fate by chance by a continued chain of causes or any other way because to err is an imperfection by how much the less power they will assign to the author of my being so much the more probable it will be that i am so imperfect as to be always deceived to which arguments i know not what to answer but am forced to confess that there is nothing of all those things which i formerly received as truths whereof at present i may not doubt and this doubt shall not be grounded in inadvertency or levity but upon strong and premeditated reasons and therefore i must hereafter if i design to discover any truths withdraw my assent from them no less than from apparent falsehoods but tis not sufficient to think only transiently on these things but i must take care to remember them for daily my old opinions return upon me and much against my will almost possess my belief tied to them as it were by a continued use and right of familiarity neither shall i ever cease to assent and trust in them whilst i suppose them as in themselves they really are that is to say something doubtful as now i have proved yet notwithstanding highly probable which it is much more reasonable to believe than disbelieve wherefore i conceive i should not do amiss if with my mind bent clearly to the contrary side i should deceive myself and suppose them for a while altogether false and imaginary till at length the weights of prejudice being equal in each scale no ill custom may any more draw my judgment from the true conception of things for i know from hence will follow no dangerous error and i can't too immoderately pamper my own incredulity seeing what i am about concerns not practice but speculation to which end i will suppose not an infinitely perfect god the fountain of truth but that some evil spirit which is very powerful and crafty has used all his endeavours to deceive me i will conceive the heavens 
air earth colors figures sounds and all outward things are nothing else but the delusions of dreams by which he has laid snares to catch my easy belief i will consider myself as not having hands eyes flesh blood or senses and that i falsely think that i have all these i will continue firmly in this meditation and though it lies not in my power to discover any truth yet this is my power not to assent to falsities and with a strong resolution take care that the mighty deceiver though never so powerful or cunning impose not anything on my belief but this is a laborious intention and a certain sloth reduces me to the usual course of life and like a prisoner who is in his sleep perhaps enjoyed an imaginary liberty and when he begins to suppose that he is asleep is afraid to waken but is willing to be deceived by the pleasant delusion so i willingly fall into my opinions and am afraid to be roused least a toilsome waking succeeding a pleasant rest i may hereafter live not in the light but in the confused darkness of the doubts now raised end of meditation one